Hello, this is Eric Wamsley, Systems Engineer for Nutanix. Wanted to create a new video because we just released AOS 5.9 on October 3rd, and when going through the release notes, I saw that we now support VMware ESXi 6.7. So in this video, I'm going to show how to get all the bits, how to do the foundation process, and then access your cluster for the first time. I will create a follow-up video on how to configure VMware on the vCenter side, so how to make your cluster, any host settings you need to do, and all the best practices along those lines. To get started, the first thing we need is obviously Acropolis. So from the Nutanix support portal, go to the download section and hit AOS. You'll see that it brings you to 5.5.6, which is our latest long-term release support. Uh, we are going with a short-term release cycle, which is 5.9. Over here on the right side, you'll see under additional releases, it's listed. So we'll click that, and then go ahead and hit the download button and download it. Once you have Acropolis downloaded, you'll need to figure out which version of ESXi we actually do support. To do that, go over to the I hypervisor details part, go to filter, and we already know we're looking for 6.7, so we'll just type in 6.7. And you can see here that we want build 8169922. Um, if you do watch this video, of course we're in the software and computer world, things do change, so this video will probably be out of date by the time I publish it. So make sure you do this and get the latest version that your release and your hardware supports. Since we do know this number, now you can go to the VMware download page. I'm logged into my VMware right now, and I did go to vSphere, went to 6.7 as a version, and you can see here we're on the hypervisor download section. One thing you do need to check is hit the read more button and check this build number and make sure it matches from the Nutanix support page. If this build number is not the same, that means it's either not supported or we just haven't updated the JSON file yet. So go ahead and download this because we do know that build number matches the one from the Nutanix support portal. While ESXi is downloading, we'll go back to the Nutanix support portal. You'll want to download the JSON file for 6.7, so go ahead and click that and download that file to your local computer. And we are going to be doing a bare metal foundation, which requires you to download foundation also from the support portal. To get the foundation bits, go to the foundation section. And I'm going to be running foundation inside of VMware Player. Uh, so to use that, you actually want this top one. If things are moved around, you can always click the details and it'll let you know if it's for VMware or for some other product. So I'm going to go ahead and download this tar file. Once you have the bits downloaded for foundation, you'll want to open the tar file and go ahead and import that virtual machine to whatever virtualization tool you're using, VMware Player, VMware Fusion, Oracle, OVM. Then go ahead and turn it on and connect it to your local laptops or desktops uh, network adapter. Then once it boots, you should be in a screen like this. If you don't, the username is Nutanix. The password is Nutanix for you with a forward slash between the X and the four. That's also in the documentation. You can go ahead and set the foundation IP address here. You double click on it, hit run in terminal. It gives us a nice little GUI. Go in here real quick. You can actually see that I have DHCP enabled, so I'm going to stick with that. If you don't, you can come in and hard set the IP, netmask, gateway, and DNS information. But just know that having an IP address that works on whatever LAN you're on is a requirement for foundation. Next is go ahead and launch Foundation. You can either do it inside the virtual machine by double clicking here.
and it'll start the first part of the wizard for us. Or you can access the web page through your actual local computer's web browser, which is what I'm going to do. But to connect to the web browser from an external system, I need to get the IP address. So just open the terminal real quick, type ifconfig. There we go, there's my IP. Then in the web browser, go to that IP address, call in 8000 and press enter. And it'll also bring you to the first part of the screen. So the wizard pretty much gives you all the instructions. Uh, I have already plugged in all the nodes to my networking switch and I'm directly connected into that switch as well from my laptop. From my local system, we are going to be using the F0 interface. Uh, we are not going to use an install file. We're actually going to do everything manually because we like doing things the old-fashioned way here. For our hardware platform, this is actually a 3060 G4, so that's our NX line, which is the Nutanix hardware platform. And I'm a very lazy network administrator, so we are not using any sort of flags, so we'll hit no. Go ahead and hit the next screen. Foundation will go ahead and do an IPv6 discovery to see if there's any nodes out there. And you'll actually see that it did find my cluster already. I'm going to go ahead and select all of them. So just go ahead and hit check the box next to the block. And then we have this nice tool. If you go to tools, range autofill, just type in the first IP address that you want to use on top of each column and it will add it for every row sequentially. After you fill in your IP addresses and host names, go ahead and hit the next button. On this screen, we're given a lot of cluster specific information. Go ahead and fill in this screen with whatever is appropriate for your environment. Once you have this information filled in, hit the next button. Now on this screen, we're going to select our AOS version. Uh, since my system has been used before, it's already got AOS installed. Let's go ahead and see what version is on there. It's got 5.8, but that's not good enough for me. I want to go ahead and upgrade that version. So we're going to say, I want it. Manage AOS files. And go ahead and add the AOS that we downloaded earlier. When you hit the add button, it is going to have to import it to the foundation VM and upload it. Allow that process to complete. Once the upload is complete, you'll see the AOS version listed here. So we can hit close. And then in our dropdown, you'll see that 5.9 is available. Obviously I want to select that. If you are using a different version than 5.9, that's also okay. We would just have either uploaded it or go through this drop down and select it. Usually for field techs, they'll have multiple versions installed on their local foundation. So I'm going to select 5.9 and hit next. We are almost done. So the next part is to select your hypervisor. So remember, we're going to be doing ESXi. And we want to manage ESX files. Go ahead and upload the ISO image we downloaded earlier. Let that upload. Once the upload is complete, we'll go ahead and hit close. Okay, so we're good there. And if you want, we could also hit view information. You can see I actually have this on AHV, but we're going to install ESXi on it. And let's go ahead and hit the start button. And the imaging process typically takes 
15 to 20 minutes. Sometimes it does take longer depending on your computer. I know mine when it's running on battery seems to take longer. So we'll let this run and I'll come back once it's complete and we'll log into Prism. And boom, that was fast. I pressed the turbo button. So we'll go ahead and click here because imaging is done. Let's us log in to our cluster for the first time. Obviously I'm using self-signed certificates, so we'll go ahead and ignore those warnings. And first time when you log in, the username is admin. And the password is Nutanix for you with a forward slash between the X and the four. And you'll probably have to change the password. And log in with the password you just changed it to. Read every single line of the EULA. and hit the accept button. I'd recommend that you leave pulse enabled. This is our phone home feature, which can drastically reduce the time to resolution for issues. And here's the home screen for Prism Element for the cluster we just imaged. You can see that we are running the ESX Hypervisor 6.7. And if we go up to the software menu, we're running 5.9. So from here, the next steps would be to configure your VMware environment. You would have to log into your vCenter server configure a cluster, add the host, do any settings there with HA, DRS, do your licensing, all that good stuff. Uh, you would also need to register your vCenter with Prism so that it can execute commands through vCenter and make your life a whole lot easier. I'm going to make a second video detailing how to do all of those steps. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.